So we had a big Google launch uh, just this weekend. Do you want to talk a little bit about the Google event? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Did you have a chance to watch it at all today, Dan? I definitely read about it, and I'm really excited about all the different devices. Maybe let's talk about each device, starting with the Pixel sure. 3 and the Pixel 3 XL. What did you learn about that? Um, well, um, it's actually nothing surprising. Uh, of course, the, the Pixel 3 and Pixel 3 XL were leaked uh, profusely before it came out, and so it's exactly what we were telling everybody it was going to look like. Um, so here's just the stats really quick. It's got uh, the XL has a 6.3 QHD plus flexible OLED screen at 523 uh, PPI, and it's got that honk and notch, Dan. The notch is, in my honk, opinion, honk. Yeah, it's so ugly. Like, the ugliest iteration of a notch is huge. And it's because it's got two front-facing cameras. Is um, that for a depth picture, or why would they do that? You know, at first I thought it was, but really what they touted is the wide-angle ability with both cameras. It, it pieces the two uh, pictures together so that you can do group selfies. So um, it's actually a group selfie mode, but it's also probably really good if you're standing in front of the Eiffel Tower or something else and doing the selfie. Hey, look at me. So it's really, it's for awesome selfies. Now, what surprised me is cameras tend to be on the back with the double cameras so that you can get like a zoom feature, um, the extra wide angle or even night modes. And so it was surprising to see that they did that on the selfie because they felt like everything else could be handled by uh, software. So that's where the real story is. Um, I'll just finish really quick on the specs. We have wireless charging. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's great. <laughs> Um, and we also upped the uh, dust and water resistance uh, to IPX8. So that's fantastic. It's so it's it's now catching up to the other uh, flagship phones. So Real quick question yeah. about the um, OLED um, screen. Mm -hmm. What does it mean that it's flexible? I don't know. I, I just saw that written down. I think it's because, it, uh, especially on the XL, it goes right to the edge. So they're doing an edge-to-edge -edge screen. And so just like my... Uh, Samsung S9 here, I'll just hold it up, and you can see that it has the curved edges here, and that's the flexible screen. So I think that on the Pixel 3, it's got a little bit of that rounding of the edges to make it smooth, and I think it's kind of a neat look. Um, so one camera on the back, why did they do this? Well, I was pretty impressed. If you guys want to check out the keynote on it, I highly suggest you do, because it's all about the AI. So this camera, or this phone, there's nothing really special about the hardware. There's nothing new that hasn't been done before. Uh, the, even the double selfie cam, uh, cameras has been done before for wide angle shots. So that's not even new, but it's really neat, the tricks it can do. So the first one is top shot. And what it does is it takes multiple pictures and then with the artificial intelligence, it says, this is the one where the wind wasn't blowing your hair in your face, or this is the one where you weren't blinking, so you don't have all the uh, uh, all the crazy pictures. Very and, cool. Yeah, it's neat because you can also sort of go through the pictures too, and you can just scroll until you see one that you like that the AI maybe didn't pick out, but it's supposed to be really good at that. This is a neat one. I'm actually really interested to see how well it works. It's called high-res digital zoom. Now, it only has one camera. And with my phone, the S9 Plus, I have two cameras and I get an, a two times optical zoom. And that's why I got it. I wanted that optical zoom in my pocket. Well, this one does a digital zoom, but it uses that shakiness from your hand when you're holding your phone up to grab pixels that the one camera doesn't grab all at once. And then as you zoom in, the artificial intelligence sort of fills in the blanks. So it's kind of like when you watch those spy movies and they're watching the camera footage and they're like, zoom in, zoom in, enhance, enhance. <laughs> enhance. It, it, and I was like, enhancing is totally fake. You can't enhance pixels. <laughs> But that's what this AI is doing. So they really are enhancing. So we're in the future. I'm excited to see if it really works like they were showing it off to do. And I'm then, excited for my <laughs> shaky hand to get some good pictures. So the shakier <laughs> you are, the better it's going to enhance. So another one that's neat is Night Shot. Now, Night Shot sounds really cool because what it does is it takes a whole bunch of really quick shots with different apertures, grabbing different aspects of light, and then it layers the pictures on top of each other. 
And what it does is it then pieces together like a fully bright picture in the dark. Now, of course, they compared an iPhone X phone or a 10 phone to the Pixel 3, and it's probably completely unfair. But I'd like I'd like to see people do these tests, and, and they always do. You can find them on YouTube, and it will be great to see if this night mode is truly as exciting as it looks. Well, I know, here's my yeah. question. I mean, yeah. these all sound great, but it sounds like it's taking like 100 photos for each photo you're taking. Yeah. How much memory are you using, and is that going to force you to buy the more expensive phone well, with the that, bigger hard drive? It, it, that's a great question because the phone actually doesn't have a lot of memory. Um, both the 3 and the 3XL come in a standard 64 gigabytes. That's tiny, Dan, totally tiny compared to what the other cameras are doing, especially these cheap ones coming out of China. So that was a little bit disappointing. You pay an extra $100 to get the 128 gigs. Um, but really what's great about these phones is all your photos, as long as you're taking them with this phone um, in their native uh I think it's only 12 megapixels. It's all free and it uploads to your Google Photos. And so that's great. And I think the AI is smart enough to say that when you take all these pictures and this one's the one where you don't blink and you're happy with it, it deletes everything else. So I, I think that's good. And I believe there's also a feature where you can keep them all if you really want to. Nice. Uh, and so that lets you just go crazy and it all goes to the cloud and then you can weed through them later. Um, Another really neat feature is called moving focus. So I don't know if you've ever tried to take a picture of a dog. Dogs Always. don't hold still. <laughs> <laughs> dogs, cats, sea lions. Do I have a shaky hand dogs. while I'm trying to take <laughs> And what it does is it identifies it. Look at this kid. It's zooming around and or this motorbike, and it knows that this is the subject and the focus follows. So that's pretty neat. And then the very last one that um, is part AI is the wide selfie that we talked about earlier that just grabs that bigger uh, field of view. So um, that looks pretty neat. There's also another interesting feature. Um, they use Google's um, what's it, uh, Google's Assistant to screen a call. So you know how you get those phone calls like, this is your captain speaking, and it's, of course, a total fake call. So if you get a call that you don't recognize the number, you can actually turn on the auto answer and Google Assistant will answer your phone for you. And then it, it shows this little text readout of what the phone says and then what people say to the phone. And then if it's like, this is your captain speaking, you can just hang up right there. Or if it's like, this is your mom and I lost my old phone and I'm calling from a pay phone. And then you can be like, oh, mom. And then you can pick up. So Did I ever tell you about that time that mom got lost in Los Angeles in a bad area and had to use a pay phone at a gas station? No. This was just didn't. last year. It was ridiculous. So it could be her. It um, could one, be. <laughs> one real quick thing I want to bring up with that is that, that reminds me a lot of Google Voice. Um, did you ever have a Google Voice? Um, it has that option where you can have, you know, a robotic voice just pick oh, up yeah. and say, oh, hi, you know, who is this? And then they have to yeah. record it. And then you pick up the phone, it rings, and it says, hello, this is your captain speaking. And then you can choose to accept or not. It sounds a lot like Google Voice. Yeah, it sounds like it is, and it's just a little bit smarter than that, and it's built right into the phone. So it's not a game changer to me. I wouldn't buy the phone just for that. But for these other features like night mode and um, and high-res digital zoom top, sh top shot, I think these are actually pretty cool. I'm hoping they work, and if they do, do we need three or four cameras on the back like what is the the rage that's happening right now in the hardware world? Pretty soon the phones are going to be like bumblebees. They're going to have a million eyes, both on the <laughs> sides. They're going to vibrate to get really good pictures. Am I right? Yeah, uh, personally, I think a combination of the two, right? Let's use that AI. Let's throw on some optical zoom there. Hey, Google, let's get that optical zoom so you get that better quality. Throw in your super brilliant smartness, and then you get an even better product. 